Today, the session is going to be on implementing security compliance of your organization policies using ISC Posture Service. My name is Pavan Gupta. I'm a technical marketing engineer. So here is what the agenda. We're going to go through the ISC Posture Service. And the ISC Posture Service itself has uh, building blocks. So we're going to go through one after the other, one by one during our ISE posture journey. So we're going to go through the posture updates, global settings, reviewing the configuration, different types of agents available, and the configuration flow. So instead of actually talking about the configuration flow with those presentations, I thought of actually giving you the demonstration using different agent types itself. Then we're going to actually end up talking about the posture policy components, what other options are available for you to optimize your eyes posture service. Then we're going to move on to talking about the new features which were introduced in i3.1 and then talking about the demonstrating Linux posture service. So we start, we're going to start our session with the first poll question. The First the question that I would like you to answer is, are you using posture service? Let us know your answer. Yes, no, are you doing any tests around it? Or POC have a future requirement? Just let us know your answers in the poll question that was popped up now. So while you answer that poll question, let me go to the next slide. What exactly the posture service is? It's an ISC posture service allows you to check the compliance of your endpoint compliance status against the corporate security policies. It's basically a status of your comp endpoint a compliance uh, status of your compliance endpoint. Now, what are the operating systems that were supported by ISC? ISC supports Windows operating system, Mac, Linux operating system. The Linux operating system support was introduced in recent version i3.1 onwards. Now, at a high level, what exactly ISC Posture Service was doing? Now, when the endpoints are getting authenticated over the network, they get connected to the network over wired, wireless, or a VPN medium, and the uh, identity is going to be validated against the internal database or an external identity sources such as uh, Active Directory, LDAP, etc. So once the authentication is proven, at this point of time, I considers that it uh, it's a, because it is a new session and IAC doesn't know about the posture status of the endpoint, it's going to actually give a restricted access at this point of time so that the endpoint can only talk to the remediation servers, ISC, DNS, and DHCP, the required information alone. At this point of time, you could also actually deploy, considering the endpoint is a new endpoint altogether, which is coming onto the network, you could deploy agents via ISC or via software distribution methods. Irrespective of whether you're making use of IEC to provision agents or a software distribution methods or a VPN headends, considering the any connect was already deployed on the endpoint, any connect is going to discover the IEC, evaluates the post chip policies, and then post the status back to the IEC. Now, IEC determines whether it is compliant against all the security policies that you have written on IEC on the uh, IEC or not, then accordingly it will get compliant or non-compliant access. If it is compliant, then you, the endpoint is going to get the compliant access. If it is not compliant, then it is going to get the non-compliant access. This is, mo this is almost uh, similar to all the agent types that we are talking about except the agentless posture. The agentless posture is going to be a little bit different. The flow is going to be a little bit different for the agentless posture, which we're going to talk about in detail a little later. Now, coming down to the capabilities, what ISU offers as part of your security uh, organization policies, you might want to actually check an anti malware applications, disk encryption, etc. 
these capabilities will allow you to write security policies in order to make the uh, in order to have the compliance of your endpoints whenever they come onto the network you could make use of an anti malware application encryption file firewall etc coming to the remediation support when an endpoint coming onto the network, the endpoint is going to actually, the any connect presence on the endpoint is going to basically assess the posture policies that you have written on IAC. At any point of a time, if the specific check was not meeting on that endpoint, then we were supposed to actually provide the remediation in order to come out of that situation, right? So these are the remediations methods which were supported from the IAC natively. You could go with an anti-malware remediation. If at all, you, the anti-malware was not available, anti-malware installation or a remedy, definition updates, application by killing or uninstalling an application, launching a program file, firewall, link remediation. These remediation methods are going to be uh, basically allows the endpoints to remediate themselves so that they can get the network access accordingly. Specifically talking about the script remediation, it was introduced in 3.1. Coming down to the licenses that are, you require to exercise the posture service, you require the premier license in order to exercise the ISC posture service. So premier license has the ISC posture service functionality on 3.x releases. However, if you're making use of a nice 2.x release, then you might have, you have to make use of an Apex license. We came to a second poll question. Uh, before answering the second poll question, Rico, what was the answer for the first poll question? Yes, uh, thank you, Pavan. So uh, just to remind our audience, the first question was, are you using Posture Service? And our top answer shows that our participants uh, said yes to using posture, uh, posture services. Uh, following this, we actually have a tie between uh, those who said they are not using posture service at this time, and then those who have a future requirement. That's very good. So because you have a future requirement, uh, this session is gonna be helpful for you to decide um, uh, the posture service and implementing the posture service in your deployment. I hope it is, this session is going to be helpful in that journey. So coming to the second poll question, what client operating systems are used most in your environment than, uh, other than Windows? So we know most of the, uh, uh, most of the environment uh, that the customer was making use of is predominantly Windows. But other than Windows, we would like to know what other operating systems are being used the most. So let us know your answers in the poll question. While you are answering that poll question, let me go to the next slide. So as we talked earlier, the IAC posture journey involves in a couple of building blocks. So we're going to go through those building blocks right now. Coming to the posture updates. Basically, as part of your security organization policy, you might want to actually check an anti-malware, firewall, patch management, etc. There are a lot of vendors out there in the market which implements the disk encryption, firewalls, patch management tools, and the anti-malwares. With a lot of vendors, a lot of products, and a lot of definition updates, how does even IAC know about those vendors updates? So any, basically uh, this is done through the posture update. IAC has to be updated through the online or an offline mechanism so that IAC can have a latest and greatest information of these information. So you can update IAC over an online method or an offline method. An online method is going to be useful when IAC can reach the internet, the feed service specifically. If IAC was placed in your environment where it is not able to reach internet, then you can go, uh, you can use the offline method of updating the IAC posture service. Specifically talking about uh, online update, if IAC is reachable to internet, or a feed service reach it to uh, feed service directly, then you can directly update the ISC posture service against the feed service. 
But whereas if IEC was supposed to actually go through the proxy, IEC supports proxy method uh, to update the IEC purchase service through the proxy. Now, coming down to the second uh, building block that we call uh, general settings, posture general settings or a global setting. This general settings are going to be applicable when you don't have a specific IEC posture profile defined for the endpoints coming onto your network. These general settings are going to be applicable to all endpoints when there is no specific profile that you have created during the client provisioning policy you have defined in the IEC. Talking up, uh, there are some important attributes that you need to consider about. Uh, talking about the remediation timer. This is the total time that you are going to give to the endpoints in order to assess the posture policy along with the remediation. Default posture status, it's going to be helpful in uh, putting the compliance status, the post updating the posture status of the endpoint when an unsupported endpoint coming onto the network or when there is no client provisioning policy matched with that endpoint. Automatically closing. A close logging success screen allows the any connect to close the any connect window once after successful posture assessment. Continuous monitoring interval is going to allow any connect to continuously monitor the application and hardware inventory available on the endpoint and then post it back to IEC so that you have a latest and greatest information of application and hardware inventory from the endpoints. Coming down to the posture lease, this is going to be helpful whether you wanted to decide, you might want to decide whether you wanted to do posture for every authentication, for every endpoint, for if, whenever the endpoint coming onto the network, every time that endpoint connects to the network, do you want it to be postured or do you want to lease some time so that it doesn't have to go through the posture again? So you can either choose posture lease option or you wanted to actually go through the posture uh, every time that it connects to the network the posture lease is possible with the help of a last known posture compliance status we're gonna give lease posture lease to the endpoints whenever it was compliant earlier and it is also actually the cache last known posture compliance status. It is also actually helpful in order to give the grace period, which we're going to talk in detail a little bit later, uh, to get the grace period, even though the endpoint was non compliant against some of your posture policies that you have implemented. So, talking about the edge agent. So there are different agent types uh, that were supported from an IEC natively. It, they are, there are total four agent types available, any connect, any connect stealth, any connect temporal, any connect agentless or agentless plugin simply. What exactly the any connector? Any connect is a persistent agent which can be installed and it's gonna be run as a service itself. And it is the recommended uh, agent type because of uh, controls and features offered from the ISC. There are user interactions, UI available, and you can customize the UI as well. The any connect can be deployed from an ISC. That means you can provision the any connect via ISC, VPN headends, or a software distribution methods. Coming to the next agent type, that's nothing but as any kind of stealth mode. It's almost equivalent to any connect, but without a UI. It runs in the background. It doesn't have any UI. Because of that, we have a limited remediation support compared to the any connect agent. Like any connect, you could also deploy this any connect stealth agent via ISC or VPN headends or a software distribution methods. The next agent type is uh, any connect temporal as the name itself refers. It's a temporal agent whenever we wanted to get the posture status of an endpoint uh, that is coming onto your network. It is most uh, suited whenever the, whenever you wanted to posture your guest endpoints or a contractor endpoints or you even on the endpoints where you don't want to install any agent. So whenever the endpoints coming onto the network, you could make use of any kind of temporal agent to get the posture status and then vanishes it away. But because it is a temporal one, there are certain limitations available. 
and the limited remediation support is there compared to any kind of any kind of stealth agent. And it can be deployed only via ISC. Coming down to the last agent type, agentless. This agent, as the name itself refers, it's an agentless. Basically, there is no agent presence. You don't have to install the agent on the endpoint. And there is no user interaction also required whenever you are making use of an agentless. At this point of a time, there is no remediation support from the agentless. And uh, compared to other agent types, it has limited controls and features. Now that we came to the third poll question, uh, before answering this poll question, Rigo, what was the answer for the second poll question? Yes, thank you, Pavan. So uh, for the second poll question, what client OS is used most in your environment other than Windows? It looks like Linux comes up as the most used uh, based on these answers here. But Mac OS is actually very close behind with the uh, as a second highest answer. And then this is followed by Chrome OS. That's good. So basically, you guys were making use of a Linux. Uh, so. Uh, i3.1 offers posture service for Linux operating system as well. So go ahead and make use of it. Coming down to the third poll question, which posture agent are you using currently? Or if you wanted to make use of a posture service for those users who are not making use of a posture service so far, with the information that was presented so far, which posture agent are you planning to use? Let us know your answer in the poll question. While you are answering that poll question, let me go to the next slide. This is a very uh, detailed one and a lot of information was put in this slide. This slide was talking about the capabilities on the one hand and on the second hand it was talking about agent types basically that we talked about now. So there, are, there is an AnyConnect agent, AnyConnect stealth agent, temporal agent, and agentless. There, these are the three, four agent types that were supported from the ISC standpoint. Now, if you wanted to actually deploy with what agent type, then you need to understand what capabilities that are being offered from that agent type. So this is going to be helpful in order to determine that. Now, as you look towards from uh, from uh, as you went. As in when you go towards right, towards the agent lies, more and more capabilities and features are kind of limited or supported. So basically, you might have to decide which agent type. If at all you're looking for a visibility, then you could go with an agent list, which doesn't require any installation support, which gives you for the post status of the endpoint at the same time. But however, from the end user experience standpoint and a security standpoint, if you are looking for a more remediation, reassessment and the patch management support, then the AnyConnect is the preferred option. Now coming down to the configuration, the ISC posture configuration. Basically, when the endpoints are coming into the network, they get authenticated. At this point of time, the posture status of the endpoint is unknown from the ISC standpoint. We don't know what exactly the posture status of that endpoint is. So we're going to actually put them into the quarantine state by enforcing via DACLs or VLANs or an SGTs. At this point of a time, the endpoint is going to have access to the uh, limited resources like remedi remediation servers, DHCP, DNS, Active Directory, and the ISCs so that uh, the endpoint can reach to these limited resources alone. When considering the endpoint was already deployed with any connect agents, the agent is going to assess the posture policies that you have created on the ISC along with the remediation. Then we, once the posture assessment was completed, the agent is going to post the posture status back to the ISC so that it can get compliant or non-compliant access accordingly. Uh, the compliant and non-compliant access can also be governed from the DACL, VLAN, SGTs, different DACL, different VLAN, different SGTs, etc. Now, uh, instead of actually walking you through the slides, what configuration is required, I thought of actually putting them in the demonstration itself. 
So now I'm going to actually make use of a Windows operating system, Windows 10 specifically. Uh, I wanted to do the posturing of a Windows 10, which is a new endpoint, considering that it is a new endpoint coming onto the network. How do we provision the any connect? How do we configure it from an IAC? And how do we, how does it even look like from the endpoint standpoint? That's what I'm going to actually demonstrate now. Now, this is what the IAC that I'm making use of. Let's log into the IAC with an administrator privileges. Once logged in successfully, let's go to the posture work center where your total posture workflow is going to be defined. The posture workflow is basically divided into prepare, define, go live and monitor. Basically, the preparing part of it is basically involves uh, configuring your network access devices, updating your posture updates, configuring your client provisioning resources, and then defining your posture elements. So now uh, we're going to actually update the ISC with the latest and greatest information available out there. So my ISC can reach um, feed service via proxy alone. So I'm configuring the proxy here. Save the configuration. Go to the posture updates. At this point of time, ISC can be updated. There is a manual and automatic update available. So you can schedule an automatic update from the ISC for every 24 hours or Sorry. You can basically up automatically schedule an automatic update at a specific interval so that it can go and check against the feed service whether latest information available or not. And you could also actually dynamically update the post service. Coming down to the general settings, I, you can go through the uh, global settings. If at all you would want to change any global settings, you could make use of that. I'm making use of a, a same global settings here. I'm not making any changes. So coming down to the defining the client provisioning policies, I wanted to actually provision the any connector agent to the Windows endpoint. So let's go to the client provisioning resources where you download the any connect packages and then define the client provisioning policy. Before defining the client provisioning policy, the any connect agent packages and the compliance module was supposed to be there. So IAC has already, my IAC has already the compliant packages and the any connect packages. Now, so the next thing is to define the any connect posture profile. So let's define it in the name. And I'm making use of a default par parameters itself. And server name rules set it to star so that the any connect agent can talk to any of the PSN that in present in the deployment. The next thing is to create an any connect configuration. Basically, with the type of agents available in the system, you could you might you have to define the any connect configuration. So select the any connect uh, uh, Windows package which you wanted to deploy to the uh, endpoint. Let's give it a name and select the latest uh, compliance model. And you might have to actually select what modules that you wanted to install or uh, during the provisioning. So any connect is a modular one. It has several modules within in it. ISC posture module, VPN module, network access manager module, web security as part of the security. So ISC posture module always go hand in hand with the VPN model. Along with that VPN and ISC posture service, I was making use of a diagnostic and reporting tool for the troubleshooting purposes. Select the posture profile and submit the configuration. Let's go to the client provisioning policy and create a client provisioning policy. By default, if you go to the client provisioning policy, you might find a Windows client provisioning policy already defined and was provisioning agent plus Windows. Now that we have defined agent, any connect agent, that's what I wanted to make use of it for my Windows operating system. So instead of selecting the agent less, I'm going to select any connect configuration that we configured now. So that's the configuration which is required for you to provision any connect agent. Now the next thing is to define the posture policies. The posture policies basically by default, if you install any connect, uh, sorry, ISC, 
uh, IEC comes up with the default posture policies. You could make use of those default posture policy and modify them. But for the demonstration's sake, I deleted the all existing default posture policies I'm creating from the scratch at this point of time. So I'm giving it a name. Identity group can be any. The operating system, uh, what posture policy that you are writing? Are you writing posture policy for Windows operating system or a, a Mac or a Linux? That's what you are defining. So I'm writing it for the Windows operating system. The compliance module is 4.x, which is the latest one. And the posture agent type, if you look at it, it's an any connect that we, we are configuring. So let's uh, associate the requirements. So basically, I wanted to check anti-malware installation, anti-malware definitions, whether definitions are up to date, and the firewall, whether firewall was enabled on the endpoint. And I also wanted to check whether any USB mass storage was plugged into the endpoint. If at all it was plugged, I wanted it to be disabled during the uh, connectivity. And then I wanted to grab the application and hardware inventory available on the endpoint. So those are my security policies for the Windows whenever the end, Windows endpoint coming onto the network. So now that you have defined the posture policy for the Windows operating system, you could also actually change uh, the the uh, policies. You can make it a mandatory, you can make it an optional or an audit. Basically, it will allow you, whether you are looking just for a visibility or you are looking for a end user experience standpoint, or whether you wanted to go with a strict enforcement where man, the endpoints are supposed to meet all your security policy, that's what it decides mandatory optional audit. Now, at this point of time, I'm making use of all mandatory security policies so that endpoints coming onto the network were supposed to meet those security policies at any cost. So now the next thing is to define the posture, uh, the authorization policies for the end users who are coming onto the network. So I defined a, um, an author a new policy set for the end users who are coming onto wired or a VPN wireless network. Just for a demonstration sake, you could also create a, a different policy set for wired wireless. Basically, for the demonstration sake, uh, my devices are based on the wired and wireless network and coming from the specific location. From that policy set, uh, we have already created an authentication authorization policies. The authentication policy, whenever the users are coming onto the network with a dot .connect authentication, it's going and validating against all user ID stores in which Active Directory was also present. And coming to the authorization policies, we were making use of three authorization policies here at the high level. Uh, the default one is being de de giving deny access. If none of the, uh, the first three authorization policies are matched, then the default authorization policy is going to match and it's going to give deny access. Considering that the Windows endpoint coming out of the network uh, is got authenticated via wired or a wireless and coming from a specific location that you have specified, and if it is .connect authenticated, then it's going to go through the client provisioning profile, wherein we're going to redirect the users to a uh, client provisioning page where they can download the any connect. If at all it is compliant, I wanted to give uh, permit access. If at all the post status of the endpoint is becoming non-compliant, then I wanted to restrict the access with the restricted access or C profile. Now let's go to the Windows endpoint and let's log into it. So I got it authenticated. <clears throat> I'm logging in as a uh, um, domain user to the endpoint. Now, as in when I logged in successfully, when I brought up the browser, it was already detecting that uh, it needs a redirection. It was redirected to a client provisioning portal. And at this point of a time, IAC was determining whether the any connect was already present and available. If it is not, then it's gonna basically allow you to download the network setup assistant. The network setup assistant allows you to download the posture agents that you have configured in the client provisioning policy. So run the network setup assistant. 
let's connect to the PSN. It automatically connects to the PSN and downloads the any connect. So as part of the client provisioning policy, we have defined to provision any connect uh, security model, compliance model. And dart model. Those are the three things that we wanted to provision from an ISC. So they are getting installed at this point of time and it automatically gets installed and runs as a runs at a, so any connect tries to discover the IEC at this point of time, connects to the PSN, grab the posture policy for it to evaluate and post the status back to the IEC so that it can get compliant or non-compliant access. At this point of time, my endpoint was already compliant against all the security policies. So the endpoint got the compliant access. Let's go back to IEC and look at the live logs. So if you look at it, uh, the user who got authenticated from the Windows 10 workstation, a, 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 the poster status of the endpoint became compliant. That's the reason why we got the permit access as an OTC profile and it matched with the compliant access OTC policy. Now, if you go to the context visibility as part of your operation, operations and uh, monitoring daily duties, obviously you wanted to uh, see how many endpoints are coming onto your network, how many of them are becoming compliant or non-compliant. So the compliance dashboard is going to be a very good dashboard for the compliance. So you can go to the endpoint specifically who came onto the network. And as you know, we already configured to grab the application and hardware inventory. So the applications available on the endpoint, it already grabbed and it all, it was already posted or back to the IEC so that you can see what are the applications installed on the endpoint and running as well as running on the endpoint. You could also make use of a uh, dash. Uh, you could also see what are the past and failed condition. What was the compliance status? You could also make use of the compliance dash lit. How many of them are becoming compliant and from which location they are getting authenticated. And uh, what type of agent uh, or endpoints are coming onto your network. Finally, you can rely on the operation reports. There are three reports possible. The posture assessment by condition, posture assessment by endpoint, posture script remediation. Posture assessment by condition is going to be useful whenever you wanted to filter out what conditions were met or what mandatory conditions were met by based uh, from the endpoint standpoint, what posture conditions are not met from the endpoint. So basically this report will give you what checks were passed and failed, whether they were mandatory or uh, optional or an audit one, what policies that were enforced and passed on the endpoint so that as part of your operation and monitoring, you could rely on this report to gather what checks were passed or failed against the endpoint. At a high level on the posture assessment by endpoint report, this gives you high level information, what endpoints coming onto your network, with what agent that endpoint was uh, got the compliant access, non-compliant access. So that's about uh, the uh, provisioning the, that's how you can actually provision the any connect and grab the posture policy, posture status of the endpoint, whether it is compliant and it was already deciding whether to give compliant or non-compliant access. Let's move on to the second agent type that we were talking now. Uh, we were talking about the second agent type called any connect stealth. The any connect stealth is almost similar to the any connect, but it doesn't uh, have a UI. It runs in the background. So let's go through the demonstration. We're going to make use of the same Windows machine, same client provisioning policy, but with a little bit modification, how could you make it in an Akinx stealth mode? So let's go through the demonstration. So let's go to the resources. We have already, sorry. So we already have a resource available. We already configured the AnyConnect post profile, right? So you basically have to enable the stealth mode. 
so that the any connect runs in the stealth mode. If you wanted to have a notifications, uh, even though there is no UI present, then you can also enable the notification in stealth mode. Submit the configuration. So the client provisioning policy was already making use of this posture profile. So if at all you're provisioning latest any connect uh, to any new endpoint, then this profile, this any connect agent is going to be provisioned to the endpoint and it runs in the stealth mode. But because I'm making use of already uh, installed agent, uh, it's going to get updated with the latest posture profile that we have defined now. So no client provisioning policies that uh, were supposed to be updated at this point of time. But however, we need to define the posture policy. What are the compliance policies that are supposed to be adhering to in order to get the compliant access for any kind of stealth agent? So we were defining uh, basically the posture policy for Windows operating system for any kind of stealth agent. Basically, I'm looking for more 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 in like uh, same uh, requirements. I'm looking for an anti-malware installation updates. I wanted to grab the application and uh, uh, hardware inventory on the endpoint. So let's save the configuration. Let's go to the endpoint. I'm making use of the same endpoint here. I'm logging into it. So any connect was already present on the endpoint. So as and when we logged into the endpoint, now any connect tries to discover the ISC. And it tries to actually grab the posture profile if there is any update. Since there is an update available, the posture profile was updated with any connect stealth mode. So the any connect ISC agent runs in the background and there is no UI. But however, it runs in the background. So it evaluates the posture policies, submit back the report so that it gets the compliant or non-compliant access. Now the same endpoint was going through the posture. I got the compliant access. Now let's go back to the ISC. Look at the lag logs. So initially the endpoint came onto the network and it went through the client provisioning policy in which we have updated the stealth mode. So once the any connect was updated, uh, the posture status to compliant, it got the compliant access. So that's how you can basically deploy any kind of stealth in order to get the posture of your endpoints. Now coming down to the third variant, the temporal agent. So um, here is my scenario for the demonstration. I'm making use of a contractors who are coming from the Mac operating system. Uh, I don't want to install any connector agent on the endpoint. Basically, I wanted to provision the temporal agent with the help of temporal agent. I wanted to assess the posture status of the endpoint. Uh, so how do we provision the temporal agent to the endpoint to grab the posture status and accordingly give the secure access to it? That's what are we going to demonstrate it now. So I'm making use of same ISC box here. The first thing is to check for client provisioning resources. So we need to ensure. Oh God. So we need to ensure whether the temporal agent was available on the endpoint. Yes, V2 is available. I already downloaded it. And let's go to the client provisioning policy. By default, if you look at the Mac operating system, for this demonstration, I'm making use of a Mac OS. And, and if you look at the client provisioning policy default one for Mac operating system, it was already provisioning the temporal agent. So there is no change, a change required from my client provisioning policy. I'm all set. So, but however, I need to still define the posture policies. Right, so let's go to the posture policy and let's look at the posture policy. So I'm basically defining a, a posture policy for Mac operating system using the temporal agent. So whenever the temporal agent sends a posture request to ISC, based on the operating system, based on the agent request, the policies that are matching with, it's gonna be sent across to validate I'm basically looking for almost a similar kind of requirements, anti-malware installation, remediation, application inventory gap. But however, because this is a contractor use case, I wanted to define a new authorization policy for contractors alone. So for users who are coming onto the network, if they belong to the contractors group, I want them to be redirected to client provisioning page so that they can download the client uh, temporal agent. 
So that's the reason why we have created one OZ policy. But however, I'm making use of a compliant and non-compliant access same for corporate users and contractors. That means uh, irrespective of corporate users or a contractors, they're going to get the same kind of privileges whenever they're becoming compliant or non-compliant. So let's go ahead uh, uh, to the endpoint. Let's turn on the Wi-Fi and it got connected to the network. It got authenticated now. Let's bring up a browser. The browser was, let's initiate Let's try to access apple.com and it's being redirected to client provisioning page now. Start the. So the temporal agent at this point of time, IAC was trying to determine whether the temporal agent was already running on the endpoint or not. Now this is not running, so let's download the temporal agent. I'm going to be a little faster here. So I'm going to open the temporal agent, run it so that it will try to uh, contact the PSN, grabs the posture policies, assess the posture policies, post the status back to the ISC so that it can get compliant access. So Mike. Mac machine was compliant against the security policy that we determined. Let's go back to IAC and look at the live logs. So as you could see, the contractor who came onto the network from Mac operating system, his, uh, the post status of that endpoint was compliant. So that was the reason why he was able to get the permit access or zip profile. Now that's how you can actually assess the post status of the endpoint using the temporal agent. Now, coming down to the fourth variant, agentless posture. As we discussed earlier, the agentless posture flow is going to be a little bit different from the any connect uh, other agent types. We, uh, as the uh, name itself refers, it's an agentless basically. Uh, there is no agent that that's that has to be installed on your endpoint. But however, IEC has to actually figure out the uh, posture status of the endpoint uh, uh, with. Uh, some other means, right? So how was how is it able to actually get the post status of the endpoint? Well, whenever the endpoint is coming onto the network, it gets authenticated, and uh, IEC tries to see whether it has agentless posture flag enabled under the OZ profile that it matched with. If the agentless posture flag was enabled in the OZ profile that it matched with, then IEC connects to the endpoint, provisions the certificate, provisions the plugin. With the help of plugin, it assesses the posture policies and gives the secure access. Now, how does it even IAC connects to the endpoint? It uses a PowerShell or a shell mechanism, uh, SSH mechanism, in order to connect to the endpoints. If it is a Windows operating system, IAC is connected to the Windows operating system over a PowerShell mechanism. If at all it is a Mac or operating system, it is going to connect to the endpoints through SSH mechanism. You can make use of a domain credentials, which has a local administrative privileges on the endpoint in order to connect to the endpoints. Or you could also make use of a Windows local and a Mac local user credentials to connect to the endpoint. Now let's look at in, uh, in the action. So basically, I am making use of a Windows operating system here. Uh, so I'm making use of a same ISC box here as well. The first thing is to actually set up the credentials for IEC to connect to the endpoints. So that can be done through the endpoint login configuration. We are providing the domain credentials here, domain credentials where it has the local administrative privileges on the endpoint. And then let's go to the client provisioning policies. We do have an agentless plugin already available on the IEC. I'm going to make use of that, but especially for uh, the users who are, who are coming onto the network. So let's go to the client provisioning policy. Earlier, we already defined for Windows operating system, but now we were trying to define it for other Windows operating system. But basically, how am I differentiating 
with other users. This users, um, the users who are belonging to the agentless group, for those users alone, I wanted to provision the agentless plugin so that I want those type of users or endpoints to go through agentless functionality rather than with a normal any connect. So I'm trying to define a condition here. Basically, I'm trying to see whether they were part of external group agentless. If they were part of agentless group, that's then we're going to provision the agentless toward the endpoint. Now, coming down to the OZ policies, as I said earlier, we uh, sorry uh, client uh, posture policies. We have already defined one a, a posture policy for agentless for Windows operating system. Whenever the agentless uh, plugin is sending a requ uh, posture request, ISC is going to send this posture policies for it to evaluate. So I'm basically defining the same thing: any anti-malware installation definition, firewall requirement, grab the application hardware inventory. Now coming down to the, <clears throat> now that's the posture policies. Once after defining the posture policies, we need to review the policies, RC policies for it. Let's go to the policy set and let's define, we need to decide uh, what users are supposed to go through the agentless. So I want only the users who are part of who are part of agentless group are supposed to go through the agentless flow. So I wanted to actually pro, uh, provide a profile wherein I don't require to have a client provisioning I mean, URL redirect. There is no URL redirection required for the agentless functionality. But however, agentless posture flag was supposed to be enabled. So let's make use of that profile, save the configuration. Let's go back to the Windows now. And this Windows machine was part of the agentless group. So I'm logging into the Windows machine. Notice that I'm not going to bring up any browser to download the plugin. There is no UI interaction also required. So I'm just logging into the Windows. After some time, after a few seconds, IEC tries to automatically push the plugin, connect to the endpoint, get the posture status of that endpoint, and then gives the compliant or non-compliant access accordingly. So let's come back to IEC live log and see what events happen. So you logged in from the agentless user. Uh, as you could see, uh, initially, we provisioned the agentless uh, profile where the agentless poster flag was enabled so that ISC can contact the endpoint with the credentials that you have supplied and uh, it assessed the posture policies and got the compliant access. So that's how basically you can assess the posture of an endpoint with the help of agentless plugin. It doesn't require installation, it doesn't require any UI interaction. Now, coming down to the other optimal. Uh, uh, optimization that was required. So, uh, as we talked earlier, you can make a posture policy seem to audit optional and mandatory. Initially, when you are trying to deploy posture policies, you might want to choose audit policy, making them audit, so that you just wanted to grab what kind of agents or what or what kind of endpoints are um, meeting the OERP security policies, what endpoints are not meeting with, which endpoints are not meeting with uh, what security policies. That will give you a visibility to which age, which endpoints are supposed to go through strict enforcement, etc. So th this gives you, whenever you're making a posture policy into audit, there is no UI notification, there is no remediation notification to the any connect as well. It will help in the initial deployment. It will give you the visibility. Later point of time, you can make it an optional so that any connector can notify the end user, but still user has a choice to skip and to get the compliant access. 
this is kind of an intermediate step between the audit and mandatory. So once you have actually optimized your deployment and environment, and once you are not facing any problem or challenges with the endpoint, you don't want to hinder the end user experience by deploying the posture service, right? So this helps you to define that journey. By making it audit, you're not hindering the end user experience. By making it as an optional, user can skip the uh, security policies, but still can get the compliant access. But however, at some point of time, you want to have a strict enforcement. That when you can make those posture policies as mandatory so that all endpoints in your organization meet those mandatory policies at any point of a time that whenever they were coming onto the network. That's a strict enforcement that that's when you require a mandatory policy. You can also enable disable posture policy at any point of time. Coming down to the uh, uh, other option, the cache last known posture status or posture grace period. Consider a scenario where um, you wanted to actually assess the posture policies, but today the endpoint was compliant, but tomorrow it might end up getting the latest uh, patches information, but it requires to actually download those latest patches, install the latest patches. It might require a more than what remediation timer that you are offering to the endpoints. So at this point of a time, you can offer the grace period, considering that endpoint as a compliant, even though it is non-compliant against the policies that you set up, you can give the grace period. So the, the flow is gonna go like this. When any connection the posture request, it pulls the posture policy, evaluates the posture status, puts the status back to the ISC, puts the status back to ISC, and it is compliant. Whenever it is compliant, then ISC caches that compliant status for minutes, days, and hours that you can configure. Now, on this, the same endpoint, when it comes onto the network again, it sends the post request to ISC, grabs the post policy for it to assess, but now the same endpoint which was compliant earlier now it was becoming non-compliant against the security policies because those policies were supposed to have more than time more than remediation timer that you are offering you might have you can give a grace period to these endpoints so at this point of a time we can consider isc can consider that as a compliant access you can give a grace period to it Within this grace period, the endpoint was supposed to meet that posture policies so that it will continue to get the compliant access. If it is becoming non-compliant beyond the grace period, then it was gonna be put it into the non-compliant status. That's how you can offer the posture grace period. Now let's talk about ICE 3.1 features. Uh, these are the four features that were introduced newly in ICE 3.1. We introduced Linux support, script remediation, post your bidirectional trigger and hence the post your discovery. Coming down to the uh, fourth poll question, which is the last poll question. Before answering this last poll question, I would like to get uh, what was the answer for the earlier poll question? Yes, thank you. So for the previous poll question number three, we asked which posture agent are you using or planning to use? And I see that any connect uh, takes the top spot. Next, we have any connect stealth. And then lastly, we have a tie between between agent list and those that are not currently using posture. Very good. So for those people who are not making use of a posture service, this session is gonna be helpful for you to implement the security policies using ICE posture service. I hope you could actually <laughs> make use of the posture service down the line. So coming to the fourth poll question, uh, most used Linux distros in your environment. Are you making use of RHEL, Ubuntu, SUSE, CentOS, Debian, or other Linux distributions? Let us know your answer in the poll question. So while you are answering that poll question, let me advance it. So we introduced Linux support from ICE 3.1. Um, however, it is supported only with the help of any connected persistent agent. So these are the three distributions, uh, Linux distributions that were supported from an IS 3.1 standpoint. And these are the versions that were supported as well. Now coming to the capabilities, it has the capabilities. At this point of a time, you could check Antan malware, application, file, patch management, and uh, remediation reassessment post release can be offered from the Linux. 
Now coming to the script remediation, whenever the specific posture check was failing, you could make use of an inbuilt or native remediation methods in order to remediate the endpoint and to get onto the network, right? But in some cases, you might find difficult to have the remediation with the native ones. So the script remediation is going to be very helpful if at all you wanted to remediate the endpoint in case the native remediation supports uh, remediation capabilities were not uh, fulfilling your requirement. So in the script remediation method, basically any connect uses the PowerShell mechanism to run the PowerShell scripts on the endpoint, whereas uh, on the Mac and Linux operating system, it uses shell scripts to run the remediation as part of a remediation mechanism, it uses shell scripts. So you could upload your PowerShell scripts or a shell scripts based on the operating system that you're making use of to run as a remediation method. So now that we have talked about the Linux posture support and script remediation, let's combine these two aspects together in the demonstration. So I'm, ma I'm making use of the same ISC box here. I'm gonna actually go a little bit faster. I'm gonna go through the resources. So I've already downloaded the Linux resources along with the compliance model. So I'm gonna define the any connect configuration for Linux especially. So let's select the any connect desktop Linux model. Let's give it a name, select the compliance model, and you can choose what models to be installed or provisioned to the endpoint. And you could also select ISC posture profile. I'm making use of the default one. And let's configure the client provisioning policy. By default, you wouldn't find a Linux client provisioning policy. So you might have to actually set, create one Linux client provisioning policy. So let's create one Linux client provisioning policy with the help of any kind of configuration that we have done. Now that we have defined the client provisioning policy for Linux, uh, let's go ahead and create the posture policy for it. So I've already created one uh, uh, posture policy for Linux operating system, which was looking for basically two requirement, uh, whether it was having any end-time malware installed and it was already having any process. If at all that process like Firefox running, if at all that process is not up and running, I'm making use of a script remediation to trigger that Firefox process. That's my requirement as part of my security policies. Let's go ahead and look at that script up remediation. So you can go to the remediation. This is what the script remediation that I have associated with as part of the requirement. So you can upload your shell scripts to run in the uh, Linux so that uh, as part of the remediation, if the Firefox is not running, it's going to invoke it automatically. Let's log into the Linux, connect the endpoint to the network. So let's bring up the browser and it is being redirected to client provisioning page. As the AnyConnect was not already installed on the endpoint, it's going to basically download allows you to download shell script through which you can download the agent so the this shell script was supposed to be it was downloaded let's go to the download folder and change the permission to make it executable run the script so that the shell script is going to automatically download the any connect agent. At this point of time, it was trying to contact the ISC and trying to download the any connect agent and it's getting installed. Now that any connect agent was already installed, it's going to automatically discover the ISC, contacts the ISC and then grab the posture policies for it to evaluate. And uh, if at all, if the Look at it, the Firefox was closed earlier before installing the agent. Now, because it was not running, so through the script remediation, it automatically triggered the Firefox so that any connect reported the compliance status and it got the compliant access. Let's go back to the live log and look at the events. So the 
Linux operating system came into the network. It's in the Red Hat or Linux, and it got the compliant access accordingly. Now, one thing to notice here is through the script remediation, basically it was uh, successful in meeting the post ship policy. So you might want to see how many endpoints are meeting with the script remediation successfully, how many endpoints are not actually executing the remediation method that you can establish via post ship script remediation method. You could see the state as that the remediation script execution was successful. If at all, it is not attempted. If it was if Firefox was not running, so it's with the help of a status, you can basically look what was happening behind the scenes from this report. So that's basically how you can actually posture your Linux endpoints. Coming down to the next two features that we introduced in 3.1, one is called Discovery Backup Server List, uh, wherein this is especially useful when the PSN that you got connected to was not available when the any connect tries to discover the PSN that uh, that it got authenticated with if that PSN itself is down then any connect tries to send the probes to all the PSNs out there in your environment so in uh, instead of sending the uh, probes to all other PSNs, you can basically customize this probe to a backup server list alone. So if, if two PSNs are available basically in your environment, PSN1 and PSN2, if the endpoint got authenticated against PSN1, you could choose PSN2 as a backup server list so that any kind of can probe whenever PSN1 was not available. Coming down to the post bidirectional trigger, uh, basically it helps you to uh, it helps in the mismatch condition. Uh, there are scenarios where IEC treats the post status of endpoint as uh, compliant or a pending, but it might not match with the any connect status. Any connect might think that it is in compliant, but IEC might think that it is still in pending state. So when this mismatch happens, the any connect is no way to actually go through the process again, the discovery and the posture assessment again. So, in order to help that issue or uh, information, we introduced this posture bidirection trigger, wherein any connect tries to probe the PSN periodically so that it can contact the PSN at regular intervals, and then it will try to get the posture status, whether it is in compliant or non-compliant. If it is if IEC is treating that endpoint status as pending, it will put reset the status back and rescans the posture again. That, those are the features which were introduced in the IEC 3.1. And now coming down to the last one, operation. As part of an operations and uh, monitoring, you can rely on the compliance dashboard, which gives you ability to filter out the endpoints, or you can visualize what endpoints are compliant with, non-compliant with, what are the past when failed conditions uh, that are not meeting or meeting with an endpoint and from which locations those endpoints are coming with. So this compliance dashboard is going to give you the ability to visualize your total posture deployment. Coming down to the reporting capability, you can rely on these three reports so that you can basically get the posture assessment from the endpoint based on the conditions or based on the endpoint at a high level. Or whenever you have a posture script remediation, you can rely on posture script remediation report to assess uh, to see what whether that script remediation was successful if in case if it is not successful when uh, uh, why why is that case you can uh, come to know from the posture script remediation report with that I, we came to an end and these are the useful resources for you to actually uh, refer to that's about the presentation so far thanks for joining us today